Hello, in this video we're going to look at the consumer's budget constraint. Let's define a few terms first. M is going to represent money income measured in dollars. X is going to represent units of good X. Y is going to represent units of good Y. P subscript X is going to be the price of good X. And P subscript Y is the price of good Y. Price of good Y. So our basic constraint is going to look like this. Consumer has a certain amount of money income M that can be spent on good X and good Y. This right here is just total spending on X, total spending on good X. This right here is total spending on good Y, price times the quantity purchased. Total spending on Y. When we do our budget constraint graphically, We'll put the Y good up here, the X good down here. These are, again, we're measuring units here. These are physical units. Good X, physical units, a good Y. So to get an equation that describes a budget constraint, we want to solve this for Y. So I'll go over here and solve that for Y. So just moving this price times x term over to the other side. I'm getting rid of the price of good y here on the left hand side by dividing everything through by the price of good y. And we're left with an expression for the budget constraint. The vertical intercept is right here. Just take your money income and divide it by the price of good Y. That will be the maximum number of units of good Y that you can buy. This is going to be a downward sloping line. Notice the slope here is negative. And the slope just reflects the ratio of the two prices minus the ratio of the two prices. So the price of good X divided by the price of good Y is going to represent the slope here. And the other thing that we can get here is a horizontal intercept. Uh, the horizontal intercept is just going to be M divided by the price of good X. You can figure that out by just setting uh, y equal to zero here or here, setting y equal to zero and um, solving for x, that's what you'll get. So that is the basic idea of the budget constraint. Now let's do some examples with numbers. Uh, maybe the consumer has a hundred dollars of income the price of good X is two dollars a piece. The price of good Y is four dollars a piece. Let's graph the consumer's budget constraint. So what we learned from the previous slide is that the vertical intercept is going to be your money income divided by the price of good Y. So a hundred divided by four means at most we could get 25 units of good Y. Okay, we've got $100 and good Y costs $4 a piece, so at most we could get 25 units of good Y. As for good X, we've got $100. Good X costs $2 a piece, so 100 divided by 2, we could afford 50 units at most. Connecting the dots here, we have our 
linear budget constraint. And notice that the slope uh, rise over run 25 divided by 50 or just a ratio of the price uh, good x to good y just minus one half. Alright, uh, what would happen if money income doubled, the price of good x doubled, and the price of good y doubled? What would happen to our budget constraint? Well, actually nothing would happen. It would look exactly the same. A doubling of income and a doubling of all prices leaves the budget constraint unchanged. Down here, this is going to be 200, oops, 200 divided by 4. We can still only afford to buy 50 units of good X. Up here, the vertical intercept, income divided by the price of good Y, 200 divided by 8. At most, we can still afford only to buy 25 units of good Y. So these two budget constraints are exactly the same. Okay, let's do uh, something maybe a little bit more interesting. Going back to $100 of income, price of good X rise is now to $5. Price of good Y is unchanged at $4. Let's see how this budget constraint changes from our original. We still can only afford to buy 25 units of good Y at most. But since good X increased in price from 2 to $5, we can now only afford to buy 20 units of good X if we spent all our budget on good X. So 100 divided by 5 means at most we could get 20 units of X if we spent all our money on that good. So this is what our budget constraint would look like in this case. Notice when the price of good X increases, this budget line it pivoted in. It went from 25 to 50 here to, oops, not quite drawn to scale, but 25 to 20. All right, uh, let's look at another example. Um, let's say that M equals $100 and the price of good X is our original $2 a piece, but now the price of good Y is lower. The price of good Y fell to $1. In this case, our budget constraint will be 100 at the vertical intercept, 100 divided by 1, and the horizontal intercept is unchanged. So when the price of good Y falls, notice that the vertical intercept, it increases. All right, let's do a few other, maybe more interesting examples. Okay, so let's start with this setup, but now let's assume that we have a buy one, get one free offer for good X. So with good X, there's a buy one, get one free offer. So BOGO, buy one, get one free. What would the budget line look like in that case? Budget constraint. Well, if we spent all our money on good Y, we still could afford only to buy 100 divided by 4 or 25 units. Okay. Income divided by the price of good Y gives us this point. If we spent all our money on good X, we would buy 50 units, but then we'd also get 50 free, since it's buy one, get one free. So we could now get 100 units of good X in total. You can afford to buy 50 at $2 a piece, given your $100, but since it's buy one, get one free, you get 50 free and your budget line will look like that or your budget constraint will look like this. Okay, let's do some uh, other examples that you might encounter. You got an income of $100, price of good X is $2, price of good Y, price of good Y is $4.
But now let's say you have a coupon for 10 free units of good X. You have a coupon or voucher that gives you 10 free units of good X. Let's think how that's going to work in this case. So if you spent all your money on good Y, $100 divided by 4, you could buy 25 units of good Y. Then you could use your coupon to get 10 free units of good X, which is going to be a point right here. So this consumer could be at a point like this, consuming 25 units of good Y and 10 units of X. You spend all your money on good Y, being able to buy 25, use your coupon to get 10 free units of good X. Okay, so we get this point. Now let's think about it from the perspective that the consumer spends all his money on good X. If you spend all your money on good X, you could buy 50 units of good X, use your coupon, 50 plus 10, that means you'll be able to consume 60 units of good X. So this is what the budget constraint looks like in this case. There's a kink in it because of this coupon. Okay. Let's do a, another example. Get another kink in the budget constraint. M equals $100 as before. Price of good X equals $2 and the price of good Y equals four dollars. This time let's say you have a twenty dollar gift card for good Y. Okay, you're given a twenty dollar gift card that can be used to purchase good Y. Okay, uh, let's think how this may work. If you spend all your money on good X, 100 divided by 2, you can afford to buy 50 units of good X. You could then use your $20 gift card to buy units of good Y. And since units of good Y cost $4 a piece, that $20 gift card will get you 5 units of good Y. Point over here. So this is going to be part of the budget constraint right here. This consumer can afford to be at this bundle right here buying 50 units of X using the $20 gift card to purchase good Y at $4 a piece would give the consumer 5 units of good Y. And so let's now find the vertical intercept. If you spent all your money on good Y, you could get 25 units of good Y plus you have a twenty dollar gift card that will get you five more units so this is just going to be thirty and we have another budget constraint with a kink in it because of this gift card so again to get this vertical intercept all I did here was I took a hundred divided by four that gave us twenty five units plus you have this twenty dollar gift card divided by four that gives you 5 units, so 25 plus 5 is where that 30 is coming from. Let's see, any other examples? Oh, I think I exhausted my examples for now. Okay, hope you found this helpful.